若く無様そういうバカ好きだぜ Hello, hello, hello everyone, and welcome to Anime Chan. Today I'm going to watch episode 475, 476, and 477 of One Piece. I'm not going to ramble on too long in today's intro because I'm actually streaming after watching One Piece today. Usually I don't stream on One Piece days, but、uh, I'm actually taking tomorrow off. Which is very exciting because I haven't had a day off in like a month or I think over a month.、Um, and I want to use it to spend some time with Hanku and his brother who is visiting. And we're going to go do some window shopping in the morning. And then during the day, we're, they're going to golf and I'm going to be walking with them. And I think we're going to buy some drinks because apparently people do that on the golf course. They walk and play and drink. So I'm going to see if I can get like. Some pre mixed cocktails or something fun like that. And I will be taking photos and sending them on Discord for my patrons.、Um, maybe if there's a nice one, I'll post it to Instagram because all my Instagram photos are just like selfies because I never go out, because I never take a day off. So I'm always replying to comments and DMs and recording videos and all that kind of stuff.、Um, so I never have photos from me actually being outside. <laughs> So, I'm excited to go outside tomorrow and hopefully get a photo to post to Instagram. Anyway, episode starts six minutes and 21 seconds in.、Uh, where did it end last time? Oh, oh my god, it ended on that. The last two minutes of the last episode was phenomenal. Jinbei blasted Luffy in there and he. Well, there was like a giant piece of wood that sounded dirty.、Um, sorry, it's everyone in my live streams. they Everything I say, just and then they're like, that's what she said, and now everything sounds dirty. <laughs> But anyway,、um, so yeah, the end of the last episode was really, really good. So I'm excited to see it continue from there. Welcome, I hope you enjoy my reaction and my thoughts. <laughs> Can't be it so fast. No, oh, I was just about to say. Dareda. Was that crocodile? Why? But yes, but why? Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, Oh my god. <laughs> um, I know I shouldn't be cheering for, for Crocodile because he's the bad guy, but I don't want Ace to die, so I kind of, as a, a viewer watching a fictional show, I, I'm gonna cheer for the person who saves Ace. <laughs> これを袖にすることには変わりねえってことじゃねえか
haven't been seen that in a while. ね、男一匹選んだ死の道。これ。どうしよう。俺は。すまねえ、助かった。いいってことよい。I love this voice because it sounds like Ichigo from Bleach and I love Ichigo. I caught a Litwick in Pokemon Shield last night. I think it was last night. And we called him Galdino because of Mr. Three, because of wax and it was very cute. He's been hilarious in this arc. あれ It does seem kind of crazy. Uh, the amount of lives that must have been lost must have been lost in this war to save Ace's life. And the problem is, you know. I understand why Wipin would want to save, and anyone would want to save their own crewmate, but just all the lives being lost for one life that he is a pirate, you know what I'm saying? And he knew as a pirate, you know you risk your life. Why risk so many lives? Not just the risk, because you knew more people, were, you knew more than one person was gonna die in this war to save Ace's life. And I'm just curious, like, it does seem, I mean, why? They want to save Ace, of course, but what about all the other people? Don't they want to save them? But I guess it's about, you know, what Ace has meant to so many people that they would risk their own lives. But I, this is a bubble boat, someone's coming. Anyway, um, I understand more than I don't understand. It just seems like crazy to think how much Ace must mean to all those people for them to sacrifice their lives to save his. Who's this? うちの船がでそろったと言った覚えはねえぞ。あ、でもまだまだ
られたなわずかなネズミの穴一つ抜け目なく狙ってきよった親父白ひげです I knew, I knew something was coming because the subs now Ace Kun can be a risk so I knew something's gonna cut him off and obviously what's gonna cut him off he's just such a big target To touch on what I said before, it's not like wars in the world haven't been waged for something similar, you know, one person's life and then many people risking their lives. It's just, um, so what I was trying to say is, um, I wasn't saying that it was unbelievable or it was just for me crazy to think of all those people, you know, and how much, and I said this already, but how much they must value Ace and Whitebeard to to risk their and their crew's lives. Um, but I mean, that's that's war, isn't it? It's, it? The only thing is like usually a war is, um, well, the ones I've read about is because one side believes that they are more right than the other side and then they fight for i don't know it just feels like they fight for something but here they're really just fighting for ace's life it's not like they think or we don't know yet i don't know yet like clearly they're against the navy because they want to be pirates and the navy doesn't want them to so are they are they also fighting you know that the, the navy itself it's not just about ace's life you know ace's life was the tipping point but they're also against the navy so that makes you think like what if there was no navy then all pirates would be free to to roam and pillage you know your average person that just wants to do their job go home feed their family they will live in fear of you know any at any minute a pirate could raid their village and then they could they could there would be no one they could ask for help but it's it, it, it seemed like the white beard at least as far as i remember when um who, uh, we we heard from the backstory i don't remember where we heard it but isn't white beard kind of like a, a he helped the was it white beard was he giving protection to some mm, I don't remember I should maybe I'll ask Ahmad um, about that just the little details around that because I remember it being said I just don't remember the details of it right now Whitebeard was protecting some it's because of Whitebeard that did we hear it from Jinbei so maybe Whitebeard has like some kind of plan after they defeat the navy you know but yeah ace's life was just a tipping point i'm sure that you know that the, these crews they fight the navy on the daily so yeah ace's life was just some something that brought them together to fight the navy for a, a, a common goal rush into the final phase whitebeard's maneuver to turn the tides so they had an extra ship. 
I know he attempts to slip past the admirals, but wait, wait, wait. Statistic for first chapter 566. That's the one that was adapted. Score. Mm. Oh, score is mine. I'm looking here for a score, and I was like, wait, no, I give the score. To be honest, um, I kind of, I don't want to really unpack and like, the episode as a whole, I think was good. And if you take a look at my score keys, then I feel like I just want to give it a seven and move on to the next one. Mm, here we go. Four, seven, five. Four, seven, seven. All right, four, seven, five, four, seven, six, four, seven. Okay, so I think I'm just going to give it a 7 out of 10, to be honest. Uh, as a whole, I think that's, it was a good episode. The visuals were consistent, the OST was good, the, I didn't feel like anything was in this episode unnecessarily dragged out. I mean, it's taking a while to get to Ace and everything, but that's normal, you know? Like it's not a problem um, for it, for it to take long because it's cool to see like the moment with crocodile a little bit of hint there was something Galdino saw and Luffy's kind of trick that he wanted to get to Ace and then he was saved by Marco like it's it's all entertaining to see still you know it's, it's part of on the way there and like I said I don't feel like anything was unnecessarily stretched out here and it I like that the tone is consistent, it's war, you know, and this is, they're so close to Ace right now, so so the focus is on that, and that's how I feel, you know, it's it's, it's intense, and it's, oh my god, we're, we're almost there, so close, but then this happens, and then this happens, oh, they have a ship, and so I like that that tone was consistent throughout this episode, so I'm going to just give it an overall 7 out of 10 for episode 475 uh, it was cool to see Kizaru and here I'm talking it's just always cool Garp I feel really sorry for like imagine how he must feel it, it I don't know it must be it must be so difficult to remain loyal to the Navy at this point because these are you know your kids basically well grandkids technically and an adopted child but they're still I know. I just think it must be difficult for him. Do Flamingo versus Crocodile. I'd like to see that fight, to be honest. Um, Marco saving Luffy, Galdina them swimming, oh, shooting. Like once again, it's it's difficult because, like I said, I want to save. I want them to save Ace, but at the same time, you know, the Navy isn't wrong to fight pirates. Someone wants to come steal, you know come with a sword and break through my door and wants to steal my gold and food that I worked hard for or whatever um, you know that conception yes we've seen a lot of nice pirates throughout the show but at the end of the day they're still pirates and um, so in the, here technically the Navy isn't in the wrong um, in this situation I mean so it's difficult like when you see them shoot at them it sucks because these are the people that want to save Ace but at the same time I can't the Navy isn't in the situation in, entirely in the wrong, you know? Um, so, yeah, it's kind of, it's a difficult situation for me as a, as a viewer because I don't know who to root for. So, but, like, uh, Crocodile, when he said he literally, Ace was about to get his head chopped off and Crocodile saved him. So in that moment, I just couldn't help but, you know, cheer for Crocodile, even though in um, his arc, I, I don't like him as a character. Oh, and then just while I have your attention, I just quickly wanted to say something considering or regarding my last post to uh, or my recent YouTube posts. So in on YouTube, I'm currently posting my reaction highlights of the time I met Boa. And obviously people are not um, enjoying the fact that I don't, I'm not really a big fan of her character. 
but it's not because and, and I've, I, I'm pretty sure I addressed this in reviews back then but it's it's definitely not be, just because she kicked a cat like there's so much more to um, didn't I talk about this last time I, I think I talked about this on a live stream and we had such a great discussion on it uh, but now I'm just going to repeat some of what I said um, so anyway here's an example of people's response to my boa comments because uh, obviously when I watch One Piece I'm not just reacting I'm reviewing and um, the, the, the kind of story that One Piece is it's it's very it I feel like it, it does has a lot of social commentary you know for example the whole civil war thing in Arabasta um, the world government thing um, the beauty bias in real life where people that are especially especially women that are visually pretty they get lesser sentences when they do the same crimes as others not just women but often I think um, women uh, and anyway so here's an example of the kind of response I seem to be getting uh, just because I don't like Boa's character um, so far back then remember this is my reaction to just meeting Boa her introduction and stuff so I posted I have an Instagram, an anime Instagram. I have a personal one as well, but that's my anime one. And you can see here, I have some One Piece posts. Um, and, and then one day I posted a photo of um, Zero Two because she's like a really nice character. I like her character and I liked Dolly and the Franks back when I was watching it. And I really like pink haired anime girls. And then uh, the next day I watched Fire Force. And then um, there's a character. So anyway, if you don't want to hear any Fire Force spoilers, just go out now because I'm not going to be talking about One Piece without referencing Fire Force for the rest of this video. I'll end the video after that. But then I, I posted this, um, also a pink haired girl, just like, just like, ugh. Zero Two has pink hair, she has pink hair, and uh, my, my, well, what do you call it? Caption says, why are girls with pink hair so damn pretty? Also, why am I still awake at 9 a.m.? Because that was 9 o'clock in the morning and I hadn't gone, hadn't slept yet. Um, and then a person commented, so you hate Hancock but sh because she kicked a cat, yet love Inca, who's, lo who's love to see people die. I, and then a little emoji that is of a man walking away. And I'm like, and then I replied a bit rudely because I've been, I've been getting comments like this so much to the point where it's annoying. Um, so instead of saying you're you're being stupid, I said you're stupid with two cat laugh emojis. That was my reply. I was like, I should have just said you're being stupid. I said Inka's pretty. I don't like her character and if you watch my reaction to the show, you'd know that. So if you watch my reactions to Fire Force, which I'm posting to pay for patrons, um, I've been very vocal about me not liking her character because she's a crazy bitch. Um, and, I, and then I continue to say, thinking a fictional character is pretty versus talking about their character setup and development in a review is very different. Um, so yeah, I just feel like uh, it's, a, it's kind of frustrating uh, the kind of comparisons people make. Like you, another person asked, and this was fine. Um, it wasn't a rude question or anything. They just asked... Um, you know, I seem to like in other in my reactions to other shows. I like the princess trope, like girls that go oh, ho, 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 and stuff like that. Uh, but why do I not like uh, uh, the trope in Boa's case? And then my response to them was um, that a trope is is funny, you know. And the same way that I like a yandere character. Because they're, it's batshit crazy and it's entertaining. Um, that doesn't mean I would I would like a yandere person. Like imagine if a person acted like a yandere does in real life. Like obviously I wouldn't like that. It's just entertaining to watch. And generally the princess type characters in shows, they're um, they're usually side characters. It's just this, this little trope that's played out. They they don't even um, like if I can think of some princess type characters I like is. Um, there's an orange haired girl in season one of, of ReZero and I 
don't even, I don't even have like particular favorites, but I just think it's funny the way they laugh and, and um, if you actually go get into their backstory and stuff, you can also see, oh, they they have a reason for being the way, blah, blah, blah. But I don't watch most shows like I watch One Piece. I watch One Piece um, for the story, not just to be entertained, and I review it. So Boa's character, yes, I can say she's pretty. When I saw her fighting the other day against Smoker, I was like, oh my god, what a cool, what a cool fighting style. But you know, saying she's pretty, saying um, I'm just not entertained by her for X, Y, Z reasons. Like I review One Piece more than I review just you know general shows that I watch, where a princess type character is like a, a supporting character and. She, her arc was focused on her. In her arc, she was a main character. So, you know, and when her, her introduction came and she was introduced, obviously I would have thoughts on that. And I, I reviewed her as a, her character as a whole. Um, she wasn't just some side character that... She ends up being a, a bit of a side character that's just used for comedy purposes. Um, and that's actually disappointing because I think her character is so much, has so much more potential than that. She could have, she could have had so much growth. Now she just ended up being, after her arc was over, she ended up being kind of like just a, a comedic relief character and, and whatever. I don't, I don't care. I don't really find that all that funny in, in this context. Um, but during her arc, obviously when she's the focus, I'm going to talk about her not just as a character trope, but just like I would say, oh, I resonate with Luffy. I don't resonate with Boa. And... In her introduction, yes, part of that reason was because she kicks a damn cat because it's in her way. People go so far as to say, yeah, but Luffy Luffy killed a boar. But Luffy, the boar, first of all, the boar, the boar attacked Luffy, but that's not, not even relevant. Um, Luffy kills a boar to, to survive, like he, he needed food. And... Animals do that too, you know, they have to eat to survive. They, a lion eats the gazelle, whatever. So people also need, need to eat to survive. I don't condone torturing animals before killing them, of course. But if, if you need, if there was a, a creature out there that was bigger than me and needed food and it ate me, what can I do? I mean, I, as long as it doesn't torture me, if I get eaten, well... Such is life. There were dinosaurs at one point and we, people were eaten. I don't know. <laughs> so what I'm saying is eating an animal for food, in my opinion, at least is different than, oh, this little cat is in my way. I'm going to kick it. So that's one reason I don't like her. Another reason is, um, remember this, this is just on my first reaction. Uh, I've only posted four or five episodes from the beginning of Amazon Lily. Uh, so it's it's not just that it's her, her way with dealing with people her the, the fact that she thinks she can get away with anything because she's pretty and there's a lot of stuff around her character that I didn't like at the start it literally isn't just about the cat thing and I just feel like comparing me saying Inca is pretty because she has pink hair to me not liking Boa because she kicked the cat among other things that's not the same thing at all so I just wanted to say if you're if you're gonna make comparisons at least make sure they're relevant to each other you know um, like for example the person who asked you seem to like you know the princess type characters in other shows why don't you like boa and then like I said princess type characters in, in general in most shows they're just entertaining side characters which is what boa ends up being kind of but in the beginning, she's the main character in, in the arc, and I didn't just look at her as an entertainment character. Um, I reviewed her character. I, I shared my thoughts on her character, my feelings on her character. Um, and yeah, in the same way that with Fire Force, I talked about Inca and why I don't like her character. Just, even though she's pretty, I think pink-haired girls are pretty, and I wanted her to be good so bad. She wasn't, and I, I didn't like her character either, so... Yeah. Anyway, this ended up being longer than I meant it to be. Um, to be honest, I should be addressing this kind of stuff in the review portion. 
but I've taken so long to do a review for the next like for I, I, I did a thriller bark review and then there's the Shabondi Amazon Lily uh, Impel Down and now Marine for it. I'm gonna have to do a big review after and to be honest I should have just kept it until there so I'm sorry for wasting your time We're, we might bring it up again in the review but at this point I think it's been over discussed so maybe I'll just skip that part of the review um, because we've talked about it enough times by now みんなの力が海に落ちたらびっくりするよ。I like his style down. Those shoes, that sash. Diamond is unbreakable. Somebody get this man some meat. That seems a bit like a bad thing to say. This seems kind of like the kind of thing a bad guy would say, you know? Because in their mind, they should... They should I know it, technically it's it's not about bad or good here, it's just he's saying it and it doesn't matter, but it just sounds like not the kind of thing the good guy says, you know what I'm saying? Caught him in his damn hand. Oh, shit. 
どこから声が<笑>それ見たことかだから言わんこふっちゃなセブルルフィ君息は反応ブギワラボーイあーおちおちゃおいえおしたー可愛らしいやつだなあなぜお,おさんこいつはもう十分やった手当てをいらねえこの時間ねえよエースはエースは俺の世界でたった一人の兄弟なんだぞ助けに行くんだルフィ君おいこれはひどいコザクだけの異性の塊若く無様そういうバカ好きだぜ<笑>命はいらねえやつは前に出ろうん好き勝手暴れてもらっちゃうらららららら守ってみろわしはここを死に場所と決めとるダンブスポンスはい。That's interesting to take note of. It's kind of ironic. Focused on the back of his. Justice or whatever doesn't matter in this case, it's, it's his justice, and he is, you know, rightfully and I say that loosely, but he's rightfully choosing his justice over his family because you know, you can't turn a blind eye. Like, he has he's been following certain rules his whole life, and he's believed in these in, in you know, the Marines and their sense of justice. and Pirates are against. That sense of justice. So he can't now turn a blind eye because it's his, his kids, you know? Or his family, let's put it that way. Which is technically right. It must be difficult for him because he's lived his whole life, you know, fighting for what is right. And in many, in many cases, in many, in many ways, the Marines aren't, at least most of them, they just seem to be fighting to protect the peace, fighting to protect. The, the your average person trying to make a living not being killed by pirates, you know. Um, so it's not that he is in the wrong here, 
but it's not entirely so he's fighting to, to maintain that justice but it must be it's just it must be so difficult to do that with your own kids that is not to say that he, that the marines are totally in the right maybe there are better ways they could deal with pirates maybe there are better systems they could set in place um, but the problem is here it's not like they're sitting around talking about it it's it's war right now and, and he, he doesn't have time to sit down and talk to Ace about things. I mean, he tried to, to talk them out of being pirates before. It, it was their choice. That's how they wanted to live. And and, and knowing that they'd be, you know, hunted and, and whatnot. Uh, but now he's faced with... He's, he's in the middle of this, uh, this war. There's no time to talk anymore. It's now... You have to... He has to fight for his sense of justice because, like I said, Ace knew what he was getting, getting into when he chose to be a pirate and he can't now, you can't just change your tune, Garp, because, well, now it's my kid's life on the line, my family's life on the line. So, Luffy's strength is exhausted, all out war in the Otis, Otis Plaza. Score, um, I'm going to, uh, I want the visuals at 8.5, I really like the visuals in this episode. Audio, got well, enjoyment, eight, story, 7.5, characters, eight, audio, 7.5, so that gives us an overall score of 7.9, very, very close to an eight, but just not yet there. Um, there's nothing that I think I want to add, include in my notes further, no screenshots that I, I mean the visuals were really nice, um, it was awesome seeing Kizaru fight Whitebeard and everything, oh, seeing Luffy, you know, want to continue forward and want to continue forward, and hearing Whitebeard say, I like people like that, I like idiots like that. Even the little bit of comedy with Iva-chan, because, you know, that's his character. But it wasn't too intrusive. It was once at the start and once in the middle. And it wasn't long or out, dragged out or anything. So that was fine. Like, I like that. Um, Jim Bay saying he has decided that, uh, what? I've chosen this as the place where I die. Like, that is heavy. He is willing to... To sacrifice his life here you know um, but there were so many good moments in the episode overall um strong moments especially for for individual characters um <laughs> i really like this boa moment um probably my favorite boa moment there isn't many to choose from actually there's this is the one moment and when i saw her fighting style for the first time against smoker or I don't know if she showed it before, but that was the first time I, I really noticed it. Um, so out of those two moments, this is my favorite one. I thought this was a really nice moment. And that reminds me of, um, you guys know Hanku edits my One Piece videos. And uh, he when he met Bawa, he was like, what? I saw a tweet about, wow, she's so pretty. Or, or it's, I don't really know what he said, but he, he basically said that he liked Bawa. And I was like, no, um, in, on the inside. <laughs> And I, I think I replied to his tweet and said something, I don't know. But um, then he, now he finished editing, what, which ones are you busy? He's busy with 411, 412, and 413. And he came to me today and he was like, you know what? I can't stop thinking about now. And I was like, what? Boa has a really big forehead. Like, I can't, I can't not see it now. She's all forehead. <laughs> And, um, oh, but I mean, that doesn't mean he doesn't still like her. It's just funny because I didn't even notice that in particular. She, to me, she's really beautiful. Um, but, but now that when he mentioned it, I was like, yeah, she does kind of have a larger forehead than normal. Um, and, and someone also commented uh, recently in, in one of my YouTube videos about how Boa is, you know, the, the, the comment was something like, so Boa is Oda's ideal woman, question mark. So basically Nico Robin, because she does look a lot like Robin, except with long hair. 
um, and I feel like they do they put a little bit more effort into making her skin look smooth and and she seems a little bit taller and maybe a little bit bustier but it's, it's basically Robin but slightly enhanced um, and it's true except that she does have a big forehead now that he mentioned it I can't stop seeing it too uh, but I mean in 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 the scene you know notice that because of the perspective she's kind of like looking up to Luffy um, but yeah she also has legs for days so I, I have to admit I don't like her power all that much once again I like her fighting style just not her power um, it's it's interesting it's not a bad power but you know turning me into stone just, okay and it's just it is ironic that her this move is called slave arrow and she enslaves men you know because she was enslaved herself so it's just kind of the irony behind that just funny um anyway just a quick note that i added um to episode 476 notes uh Dew reminded me in the this is the vc chat in my discord so um uh, is streaming my reactions after i post them and Afro, Benjamin, Dragon J, Ducky, JSD, Lisara, Mihai, Nice, Reverse, London, Jokero, Tiago, and Wage are watching together. And um, D reminded me about my notes because uh, in a, one of the previous videos just now um, from episode 475 or 476, um, I was talking about something that I remembered that was said before about Whitebeard and, and, and his. Mm, who Whitebeard is. Uh, I think it was in episode 475 at the end where I talked about, you know, uh, war and this side and that side and, and who is Whitebeard exactly? Like, what is his... What are their bigger goal and stuff? Um, and and I, re I remember hearing something about it, but here do you remind me about my notes. It says, Whitebeard claimed Fishman Island as his own amongst various other islands, which meant that these islands were protected because no one wanted to anger, wh anger Whitebeard or ravage his islands. Fishman Island is a piece only because of Whitebeard. Whitebeard claimed many islands just like he did with Fishman Island and brought peace to their shores. What do you think would happen to the ocean, to the oceans if he were to die? This was from a conversation Jimbe and Ace had in their cell. Thank you, Dew, for reminding me. And now I remember um, exactly, you know, Whitebeard is a pirate, but it seems like, you know, almost, how do I say this? We have police in South Africa and um, they are very corrupt because I remember that we get uh, a lot of people talk about how they get, um, and it happened to me as well, me and Hanku were on our way to Durban and we got pulled over even though we weren't speeding and the guy tried to get us to bribe him to not give us a ticket. We never got a ticket because we weren't speeding, but he wanted to kind of scare us into, and it was during, I think, December or something where they probably try and are getting extra money for Christmas time or something. So yeah, our police are very corrupt, but, um, you know, they deal with a lot of shit too. Um, crazy crime in South Africa so they also have their hands full uh, and, and not all of them are corrupt obviously even though we have police and when something happens you call the police and blah 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 uh, in certain communities uh, we also have neighborhood watches and there's also um, security companies so you have the police you have neighborhood watches you have security companies and they all kind of they work together because for example, the, the, police's, the police deals with certain kinds of crimes and stuff, even, even though they're meant to deal with pretty much everything. Um, but there's only so many police officers. And so the response time of the security companies are faster and, and they often catch the criminals and then hand them over to the police and stuff like that. So really it's, it's awesome. To, and, and the neighborhood watches, they go a step further where they patrol and, and make sure that... Um, criminals don't even try and and do bad things in certain communities um so it's like it's the whole and that's what i love to see um because you know the police can't handle everything by themselves so it's kind of like 
a group effort and if only somehow it, it could work the same way for example in in one piece where you know you don't just have the marines you also have pirates like whitebeard maybe they would they don't even need to be known as pirates maybe they could be known as something else because I mean, Whitebeard is doing this kind of stuff. He's, he's helping communities. Um, he's helping people on islands that the Marines don't always get to. Or, as in Nami's case, where there's corrupt Marines, um, you know, they can, they can be challenged by people like Luffy. Luffy was the one who defeated not only Arlong, but then obviously that, uh, that Nezumi Marine, the, the corrupt one. Um, so like what I'm saying is, I wonder if, we don't know much about Whitebeard at this point. We, all we know is that he's a pirate and we know what pirates are like from our world, you know, and we know what, we've seen some bad pirates, crocodile, um, we've seen some bad pirates, but that doesn't mean they're all necessarily bad. So imagine if Whitebeard and the Marines could work together as like, for example, the Marines, an independent security company and but then also um, you know you have your community watches and stuff um, that's kind of how an ideal situation seems to need to look like but um, the problem is here you know the freedom I think that that pirates values they they won't have freedom if they're working with or under but isn't that what the Shichibukai are technically supposed to be? Like working with the government, being protected, and then that's technically what the Shichibukai are meant to be. Maybe Whitebeard doesn't want to work with them because he doesn't trust them. Um, I don't know. I don't know. It's a very interesting setup. And I think it, it interestingly also reflects a lot of what's going on in our world and and we can learn a lot from the show and how things are being set up and <clears throat> but there's to be honest there's still a lot we don't know like we don't know what Whitebeard is really like we haven't we have we've heard the stories but we don't know and I mean the thing is with any community with anything that's being set up there will always be bad apples and you know just like there's um corrupt marines in in the marines i'm sure there will be corrupt people in, in the and the bigger a group gets the more likely that it is for someone to be getting away with some corruption somewhere and that's why we need to hold ourselves and each other responsible um but bottom line is we still know so little about other pirates besides Luffy and him and the ones that we've focused on in, in various arcs you know there's this world is so big and there and there's just so much more potential I can't wait to get into the rest of the story <laughs> Look at his afro. Ooh. <laughs> いちいち町を壊しやがって。守ってみろと言ったろう。道を作れ。エース決勝の道を。おぼいち。今だ急げ。ちゃんとした治療をしないと。Um, I don't know, I'm about to die. All of this is happening because of me. 
ガルディ・ロジャーゴールド・ロジャーのことか海賊たちの被害が多いのか知らねえのか why, why? 全部ロジャーってやつのせいなんだぞロジャーの一つなぎの大秘宝とかなんとかわけわかんねえこと言ったせいでそれを信じたバカな海賊たちがのさばる時代になっちまったんだ海を海賊たちの好き放題にさせがって生きてても迷惑死んでも大迷惑<笑><笑>ああどうしたんだなんでおめえが怒ったんだ<笑>ロジャーについて知りてえだと<laughs> oh, maybe he went around asking people about Roger because he knew Roger was his father. Yeah, Tada, no, <laughs> 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 I'm glad we got some context. <laughs> Honestly, I think that to be just 100% honest, I don't even think why did they tell him he's Roger's kid? Why was that even? Because the reason is if anyone finds out about it, obviously Ace would be hunted down and killed because that's what they did because they were so scared of Roger's legacy and, and whatever. Um, which was wrong, obviously. You can't kill a child just because of who his dad was. But my point is just, Garp knew, and whoever told him that Goldie Rogers is dad knew that it's dangerous for him to know that. There's no reason why he needs to know that. So why does he know it? Ah, <laughs> エンギリ育ってるわい。生まれてきてもよかったのかな。それは、おめえ。生きてみりゃ、わかる。急いで麦わら帽子を筆に運んで。こんなったら、エスボイは私たちだけで何とか。これ、I to, to just be himself and not worry about who his father is or what his father did and just raise him, him to be true to himself without whoever he was born from doesn't matter because that doesn't shape him because you know and then when he's old enough to know when he's old enough to he's already established his own identity his own just you know what he wants in life now when he was i don't know how old he was there eight he was stuck with eight nine ten whatever he was stuck with this major guilt and and that question おやじが弟が仲間たちが血を流して倒れていくのに俺は嬉しくて涙が止まらねえ。うん、because 
clear like the moment it swaps over from one style to the next you know like this boom here it's it's that i think it's maokitate immediately you can see the difference oh but this is Buggy is one of the strongest characters ever because if what Kakashi said was right and luck is part of strength, then Buggy is fucking strong because he's fucking lucky. <laughs> あの野郎うまく逃げやがったさ。こいつのせいで俺たちも過去の鳥ってわけで。ならしやがれ。こんなチンケな壁ごときで。ああ、怪盗君間もなくの発言とは思えねえ。さすがだ。うとや。どうす
getting the hormone spike injection, whatever. But they had so much space before they could get to that point where they wanted to end it, and they just kind of squashed unnecessary stuff in in there. Um, and, and when I say necessary stuff, I just mean the Kobe part and and the body part. The rest was very good. Um, what was the episode name? A power that shorten one, shortens one's life. The tension hormones return. So yeah, this is this is where they wanted to end it. And I mean, there was good content in between. Learning about, um, we're just getting a brief insight into their connection. Uh, you know, like their their past and this once again this lion Shiki, Roger's rival. So yeah, it was it was overall it started really good, and then lengthen out length wait around from here from this this part all of it very good and then just from here it's unnecessarily dragged out 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 until the end so it's just um from let's say here 14 minutes to nine almost 20 let's say 1930 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. What? Really? Five minutes? Yeah, those five minutes, I have to admit, I I didn't enjoy. But 5.25 to 14 minutes was really good. So that's 10 minutes of good content. And then here at the end, um, 19.40 to 22. Now there's another few minutes of... Of good content so overall a really good episode but unnecessarily stretched out for five minutes because they didn't know how to get to the end it feels to me my score for this episode like if episode seven four seven five was a seven and episode four seven six was an eight this one was probably like in between those two because the majority of the content, the, the excluding those five minutes, was really good. But it was the only one that was that felt dragged out. So it's very difficult to get a score. Because 475 got a 7, even though it wasn't dragged out. But nothing felt... It just felt like, you know... Whereas this had... And, and really good visuals and parts. Although I was a little bit inconsistent in terms of visuals. Good visuals overall, but, but kind of inconsistent. Using different styles and different parts, it felt. Hmm. It's difficult to score this one. Story, I'm going to give a... A 6.5 characters 7.5 visuals 7.5 audio 7 in enjoyment 7 which gives an overall score of 7.1 mm, 6.5 is a bit too it's, it's closer to a 7. Let's make it a 6.9. It's still in 6 territory where I can't really say that it was good for me because of that 5 minutes of what I felt was unnecessary content. So I can't give it a 7, but I mean 6.5 is a bit too low considering the what came before and after those 5 minutes. So I think 6.9 is fair and that gives us an overall score of 7.2. Power that reduces one's life. Whitebeard falters for a moment as a result of his age and physical condition. That is quite heavy. That's a big thing that happened in the episode because Whitebeard faltered. Like his his health seems to be catching up to him at this point, and that's scary. He is attacked by Akainu. Admirals Kizo and Aokiji successfully attack commanders Marco and Jozu. Ace laments over the deaths. He caused but also at the same time I think it was important to note that he also felt appreciative he felt happy for you know he, he when he was younger he felt like 
was him, him being born even a good thing? And when he sees the, these people fighting for him, I think a part of him is grateful and feels loved. And um, I think that that's very meaningful for him. Livy asks for lost favor from Emporio Ivankov and um, an Emporio tension hormone shot, which Ivankov reluctantly agrees to give him. And then it ends with him getting a power power up. Yeah, just the fall of or this the big before. It's because of Sengoku's plans that you know that the white beard pirates and everyone was kind of caught off guard. They didn't really know they were coming to them, so they were in their territory. The white beard pirates and and their supporters was in the marines' territory, so obviously they have the upper hand. But then it looked like despite that, Whitebeard got the upper hand, but now Whitebeard's health is failing him. It's not just that they're in, that they are in their territory. Whitebeard's health, he can't fight the same way he could maybe, you know, 20 years ago. So it's, it's difficult to see him mashed up against someone like, uh, like Akainu. Magma powers hit him in the chest. Like I don't know how he's gonna survive this. I don't. I, I don't know if he's if he's gonna survive this. Anyway, um, that's it for today. I'm going to just take twenty minutes to schedule a video that I need to post. One Piece um chapter the manga chapter two two seven to two three five. I'm gonna get that ready to post tomorrow. Um. And then I'll probably be streaming for a little bit, even though uh, I don't know if I feel like I'm in the mood for for what I'm planning to watch tonight. But I don't want to reschedule it again. Ah, but anyway, that's not now's problem. That's later's problem. I'll see you guys. Uh, some of you in the live stream, and some of you in the next pair uh, batch of videos that you're watching me. Bye.